Hi everyone, my name is Gail. Welcome to this winter solstice practice, a practice of embracing the darkness. So we'll be going inward with some forward folds and some slow movements, some meditations, and some palming to rest your eyes and help the eyes to relax and rejuvenate. So all you'll really need for this practice is a blanket. So let's start on our backs. And we're going to start with something called palming, which is a way of resting your eyes, healing your eyes, really going into the darkness. So start by cupping your hands. So there's a hollow place on the palm of your hand. And then rest the outlines of your hands on your face over your eyes. So nothing is touching your eyelids. And just try and seal out the light. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on your face. You just want to, to have like a soft touch around your eyes. Trying to seal out any little bits of light and having your eyes closed. Now it could be nice to roll up a blanket and place it on your chest so you can rest your upper arms on the blanket but that's not absolutely necessary. And focus on your breath moving in and out. And begin to do a little pelvic tilt. So tilting your pelvis forward, creating a little space under your low back, and tilting your pelvis back, flattening your back. Do this little slow movements back and forth. moving slowly and then just letting your back settle feeling your back be heavy on the earth on the floor and focus on the movement of your breath moving in and out so that when you inhale not only do you feel your chest and your belly lift but you feel your back pressing into the floor a little bit more and a little bit of movement out to the side, on each side. Relax with your breath. Letting go of any effort and just letting yourself sink into the darkness and into the stillness. So the winter solstice is the longest night and the shortest day. And the darkness is a place to rejuvenate, rest, and restore. So just focus on relaxing your back and feeling your breath. And even feeling a sense of your breath moving into your eyes, bathing them with nourishment healing, accepting, trusting. This is the time of year when nature goes into dormancy. It's a time of letting go and releasing and being comfortable with the unknown, that which we cannot see. The more we can rest the optic nerve, the more we can heal our eyes naturally. The more we can improve our eyesight so that by spending time in darkness, we end up seeing more clearly. Notice how your body relaxes slowly 
bit by bit in its own time with its own rhythm. Slowly release your hands from your face and keeping your eyes closed, roll over onto your belly and come into child's pose. So let's do child's pose with our knees slightly apart. Have your arms forward and straighten your arms while lifting your head off the floor. So your ribs rest on your thighs. And then begin to cat cow in the upper back. So on the inhale, think of sending your chest towards your hands. And on your exhale, breathe into your back. Expand the back between the shoulders. And just glide back and forth between your cat and your cow. Notice how the pelvis stays more or less still because it's sitting on your heels, but the upper back is moving. Now bring your forearms down to the floor. Rest your head on the floor. Let your hips come up. So by keeping your head on the floor and your forearms on the floor, your head and your shoulders stay relatively still. You can really feel the pelvis moving, arching and rounding moving slowly. Feeling that sense of quietness. And then press your hands into the floor, tuck your toes, lift up and back into downward facing dog. And just move your head. Tucking your chin towards your chest and lifting your chin up. Stretching out the back of your neck and then contracting the back of your neck. Just back and forth. The pelvis and the shoulders stay still. And your eyes are staying closed if possible. You can always open them if you want to, but it's nice to get comfortable with the darkness and go more inward, like feel all the subtleties of the movement. The lower your knees to the floor, coming into tabletop. And we'll do some full cat cows. So everything is moving. Pelvis is moving. Chest is moving. Head is moving. So getting as much movement in the low back, the upper back, and the neck. Just letting your breath guide you gliding back and forth between your cat and your cow with the breath. Enjoying the movement. And the slowness and the quality of your movement. And lower your forearms to the floor, walk your feet back. You can keep your knees down or lift them off the floor for forearm plank. Try to keep your hips about shoulder height or even a little bit lower, but not so low that you sag. So keep a nice engaged form here. Tilt your tailbone a little bit towards your heels and stretch your chest forward and your heels back. And see if you can find a balance here. And play around with just little movements of your shoulders, little movements of your hips, where do you feel the most freedom? Just sensing the alignment of your body and the ability to hold this pose. That's a little bit difficult and being comfortable with being uncomfortable and using your breath to help to release some of the discomfort and help you to deal with it. Not in a way that's punishing yourself, but in a way that's challenging yourself. And slowly lower your belly to the floor. Bring your elbows underneath your shoulders and let your ribs relax. 
We just feel like, let your um, ribs lower to the floor and lift away from the floor. So it's just a little bit of movement. Kind of lifting and lowering the ribs. Keeping the shoulders relatively still. And just feeling that little bit of movement. And bring your hands forward and a little bit out to the side. And do that same kind of little bit of lifting and a little bit of releasing. So it's very small movements. Every time you lift up, feel your back muscles engaging. And every time you lower down, feel those muscles releasing. So there is a natural pulsing. And if you want, you can move your hands back just a little bit to lift a little higher on the inhale and relax a little lower on the exhale. So again, just very small movements here. And then bring your hands together. Rest your forehead on the palm of your hands. Bring your feet up and windshield wiper very slowly your feet from side to side. Just seeing how close you, to the floor you can get both feet. And just nice slow movements. And then uh, bring your legs up, widen your knees apart, and bring the soles of your feet together. So it's like you're in Baddha Konasana on your belly. And you can move your feet a little closer to your hips or move them a little bit further away. Noticing how that feels in your hip joints, in your groin area. And if this is too much for you, you can always just straighten your legs with your feet wide apart on the floor. And then pick your feet up and lower your feet down. And just let your hips, your inner groins kind of adjust to this feeling. And a little bit of movement. And also some stillness. If you want to stay in one place, just feel free to do that. And then walk your elbows in, straighten your right leg, bend your left knee and reach back with your left hand for your foot. When you reach back, look back and that'll make it actually easier to, to grab your foot. If you still can't grab it, you can take a strap and place it around your foot. And then like you would bring the strap over your shoulders so you can push into the strap and use the strap to help to Bring your heel closer to your hip and get into the quads. Otherwise, you can hold the top of your foot. And if you're flexible enough to get your heel close to your hip, you could rotate your fingers forward. And then again, the more you roll so that your left hip bone, front hip bone is closer to the floor, you can get maybe a little bit deeper into the stretch if that's what is appropriate for you right now. Instead of just holding the stretch at the maximum place, just kind of come in and out of it. And switch sides. So same thing, right hand to right foot or use a strap, pull your heel in by your hip and let it release. Make the movement slow and mindful. Feel free to close your eyes. And release your right foot. Bring your right forearm back down. Stretch your right arm forward and hold your left foot with your left hand. 
Kick back with your foot and then lift your legs up off the floor, your chest up off the floor, your arm up off the floor. Stretch out through your fingers and out through your toes, trying to elongate the spine. And try and keep your left knee in. Don't let it go way out to the side. So there's an inward action. Good, a release and switch sides. So left arm comes forward. Hold your right foot with your right hand. Lift up through your chest and your legs. Expand outward. Good, and release. Place your hands by your ribs. Inhale up into your cobra. Full cobra. And lower down, tuck your toes. Press back to downward facing dog. Get a nice long stretch through your back, down through the back of the legs. So the whole back body is in extension from your heels all the way up your legs, through your glutes, all along your back, back of your spine, all along through your neck, up into your head, extending out through the crown of your head. And come up onto your tiptoes, walk your feet forward to your hands, coming into a forward fold. Bend your knees generously and see if you can get your ribs to your thighs. Hold your elbows with your hands, let your head dangle. Keep your eyes closed. But if you need to open them, you can always open them. I'm, these are suggestions. And gently rock your hips side to side. And inhale, lift up to a flat back. Hands can be on the floor or on your, your shins. Lower down. And inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Close your eyes. And just feel your whole body in Tadasana and mountain pose. With the feet grounding, rooting into the earth, strong base. And your inhale, reach your arms up. And your exhale, release your arms back by your side. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, float your arms up, palms up. Maybe even lift your closed eyes toward the sky. And then exhale, lower your hands down. One more time, inhale, reach up. And exhale, release your hands down. This time we'll add some forward folds. So inhaling, reach your arms up. And on your exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way back up. And exhale, forward fold. Back and forth, with the eyes closed if possible, getting comfortable with the darkness. And moving with grace and balance and ease. A couple more times, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. And just stay with your eyes closed and your forward fold for a few breaths. And place your hands down on the floor. Step your feet back into plank. Eyes can be closed or open. Lower your knees to the floor, or if you have a strong practice where you um, go into Chaturanga easily, then you can keep your knees up. Lift your shoulders up even more. Point your toes and curl up into your cobra. And you exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes. And come back to downward facing dog. Walk your feet in a little bit. Inhale, reach your right leg up. And exhale. Bring your knee into your chest, see if you can aim to touch your nose with your knee. Even if it doesn't happen, just kind of hug in and go back and forth. The next time, step your foot forward, coming into your lunge. Engage through your legs, inhaling, rise up, crescent lunge. Lift your heart up toward the sky, gaze up toward the sky. Eyes open, reach out through your fingertips, lift up through your heart. And then rotate the back heel down, pivot the front foot in, and come into a wide-legged forward fold. You can close your eyes here, just let your head dangle.
and inhale lift up to a long spine and exhale forward fold just like in Tadasana but with the legs apart inhale lift and lengthen through your spine exhale forward fold one more time inhale lift and lengthen exhale fold bring your right hand to the center line of your body and start to open up twisting through your ribs opening up the shoulder and finally releasing your arm up toward the sky and lower your left hand down and same thing twisting to the right nice slow twist letting the opening reveal itself to you and lower your hand back down pivot your feet in a little bit and take your right hand across to your left leg by the ankle or a little bit higher up on your leg if you need to and then take your left hand across to the right so your arms are crossed let your head hang let your whole spine relax and open up press down firmly into both feet and feel like you can draw energy from your feet up into your hips and then from your hips down into your feet feel your breath moving in and out then switch hands so the right arm is on top left arm underneath or just make sure it's the opposite arm on top again just let everything relax let your head hang feel maybe a little bit of traction on your spine from the weight of your head breathe in and out slowly eyes are closed and then release your hands and pivot your right foot forward framing your foot with your hands and reach your arms up crescent lunge then open up into warrior two resting your right forearm on your right thigh and begin to circle your left arm nice slow circles taking your time feeling that full range of motion and reverse the direction of your circles moving nice and slowly at your own pace come on back up into warrior two straighten your front leg and switch direction so your left leg is in front and make your way into downward facing dog in down dog lift your left leg up touch your left knee to your left armpit hug in again touch again reach back come all the way forward stepping your left foot forward coming into crescent lunge so lift up to your heart use your breath to expand your chest and then again parallel your feet this time bring your feet a little narrower with your toes pointing out place your hands on your inner thighs and begin to reach one shoulder at a time towards the opposite leg just really diving in and come back up into your crescent lunge rest your left form on your left thigh begin to circle your right arm nice and slow easy circles taking time to feel the fullness of the range of motion make sure you switch directions so you circle in both directions and then come to standing with your feet parallel heel toe your feet in towards each other and come into a squat and start to rock around on your feet in your squat and shift your weight from side to side and take your blanket make sure that it's handy for you sit down with your legs about a foot and a half or two in front of you and start to lower down slowly try lowering down without using your hands curling through your spine engaging your core until your shoulders finally touch the floor And just rest with your knees up in the air feet on the floor let your back settle into the earth 
and start to lift your hips up for bridge pose. So keep your hands where they are, press into your feet, and just come into a nice low bridge where your knees, your hips, and your shoulders are in a line. We'll hold this for a couple of breaths. Press your feet down into the earth, and then slowly lower your hips back down. Take a big breath in, lift your hips up to that low bridge position. If you want to add a little intensity, you can press your feet more firmly into the ground and even isometrically drag your heels toward your hips. And then lower the hips back down. Again, lift your hips up. You could even press into your hands if you wanted a little more gauge engagement in your upper body. And we'll just hold here for another breath or two. Slowly lower your hips back down. Hug your knees into your chest. Gently rock your hips from side to side. Maybe circle your hips, feels really good. And then grab your blanket and just cover yourself so you're nice and warm for your savasana. Take time to adjust the blanket, adjust your body, making sure that your back can completely rela relax and release into the floor. Make sure your feet are covered and they're nice and warm. And just relax here with your eyes closed. So the winter solstice is the darkest time of the year, the shortest day, the longest night. And it's a cycle of light into dark, focusing on the darkness, going into the darkness, into those places that maybe we tend to ignore, or it's our deep subconscious so we're not always aware. And let yourself face the darkness. Let yourself be comfortable in the darkness. We have these dark light cycles in nature in many different ways. Every day, there's a cycle from day to night and from night to day. In the solstice, we have the short day. So more darkness in the winter solstice. Summer solstice is just the opposite. And then we have the yearly cycles where the days gradually get shorter and shorter and then gradually get longer and longer. And then there's the cycle of the moon. We can see the moon wax and wane going from darkness to light and from light to darkness. And maybe we even have those, you know, periods in our life where it feels dark, like we can't see our way. But if we can learn to face that and dive into the darkness instead of ignoring it, then we can make some progress and we can make effective changes. So the winter solstice is a time to rest and rejuvenate to explore those places that we might be a little bit more unfamiliar with and to find our way in the darkness. Because from the darkness, new life begins. When we were in the womb, we were in darkness and that's when we were forming our physical body preparing to come out into the light, into the world. A lot of our personal power is within our darkness. But we don't want to let the darkness overwhelm our lives like yoga is about balance. Allow your feelings to guide you. Feel that inner truth, the true you. That you don't have to be anything that you are not. You don't have to do anything to impress others. 
just to be true to yourself. And when we're running around all the time, it's kind of hard to know, like, sometimes, who am I? We're not defined by what we do. We're defined by who we are. So the day before the winter solstice, we're preparing for the shortest day. And the solstice, solstice itself is the shortest day of the year. And the next day starts to get a little bit longer. So bend your knees, slowly roll to your side and just pause there for a moment, feeling the effect of the darkness. Maybe experiencing a sensation of some personal growth. And very slowly, come on up to a comfortable seat. And sit in a cross-legged position. You can always sit up on something if you need that to be comfortable. Let your hands, back of your hands, rest on your thighs and bring your thumb and your index finger together. Gayan Mudra, the Mudra of Knowledge. And stay here in stillness with your breath, with your eyes closed. Notice if you feel a sense of peace and serenity. Focus in on your breath. Feel the breath moving in through your nose and moving out through your nose. Let the breath be long and slow and relaxed. Feel the inner movement that the breath creates, the lift on the inhale and the relaxing downward on the exhale. So breath is our life force. It's our prana. It's our energy. It's the most important thing that we can do to stay alive. Our life begins with an inhale and ends with an exhale. So feel this moment of stillness. Feel that sense of rejuvenation from the darkness. And stay here as long as you would like. I really appreciate you taking the time to practice yoga with me and maybe to celebrate the winter solstice. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, and leave me a comment on anything you like, what winter solstice means to you or how you feel after this video. I hope you have a wonderful winter solstice. Wonderful day, wonderful evening. Namaste. See you next time.